What a lovely view here in Tuscany, right? So green hills even in winter time. I'm happy to greet you on my channel. Welcome to Echo Diaries. Let's start. <laughs> Finally, finally, I decided to start a video channel on YouTube and I'm ready for your choosy, rational critics and your likes. Now you're asking, Daria, why you decided to join the community of video bloggers with your very terrible Russian accent and poor montage skills? And I reply, environmental protection, my friends. We all know about increasing global average temperature, about ocean acidification, CO2 emission, and wildfires, and so on. But what everyone forget is that we are humans. We were born not only to destroy and pollute, but also to create, develop, and improve. People around the world are making very useful and interesting uh, green solutions for environmental problems, and I want to know all of them. We will also discover very interesting art and urban initiatives that can help to battle climate change. Same as you, I'm eager to learn them closer. Are you excited? Me too. So let's start. European countries are one of the first who understood the importance of the ecological problems we face right now. They have all factors like high level of education, access to the cutting edge technology, ability to travel worldwide and develop society and economy. It contributes to progressive eco-lifestyle Europeans want to follow. That's why I decided to make my first eco trip to Europe I started in Paris, where I visited one interesting cafeteria and a vegetal house, right next to the city center. Bonjour and welcome to La Recyclerie. La Recyclerie is a new place and it's located in the old train station. This place is truly dedicated to three actions which are familiar with reduce, reuse and recycle. The decor focuses on reusing old materials in order to make something new. The counter of the bar was once an old floor and the tables and chairs were found in the second-hand shops. They also has a mini farm with chickens, goats and herb gardens and even beehives. They also have a compost heap that uses leftovers products from the kitchen which are in turn used to grow herbs and feed animals. So welcome to Le Recyclerie and enjoy your stay here. The 18,000 square meter garden is planted with the large selection of flowers, bushes, trees just in the middle of Paris. Patrick Blanc created this vertical garden. It has approximately 50,000 plants of 150 different species coming from Japan, China, United States and Central Europe. There are about 20 plants per square meter. Besides its undeniable beautiful appearance, it's an excellent refuge for biodiversity and important element of urban ecology. It provides nesting sites and food for birds and insects. Please, come to visit the museum and enjoy the garden. Lack of recycling forces in the global waste industry is a big problem right now and it leads to the ocean and land pollution. Most of the people understand it, but others live in the Middle Ages and discard everything to the street or landfills, doesn't matter. For eco-conscious people, there is a solution. Zero waste shops. La maison du zéro déchet. I'm sorry for my French. This house of zero waste is the first place entirely dedicated to zero waste processes and lifestyle. Workshops, conferences, shop and offices of zero waste funds. Bright boutique selling reusable containers, packaging free cosmetics and other eco-friendly products for people who is under the zero waste hashtag. 
Sustainable fashion started with this pair of sandals. When firstly designed by Salvatore Ferragamo, these iconic sandals were not applied to the concept of environmental protection. During the Second World War, the main material was the Italian leather, widely used for military footwear production. So, in response to nationalistic propaganda, some designers decided to use innovative fibers and textiles based on natural materials. It turned to a necessity after the economic sanctions were imposed on Italy in 1935. After the war, the use of leather was restricted and, as a result, Salvatore Ferragamo began to experiment with paper, cork, felt, raffia and fish skin. To know more, I went to one beautiful Italian city. Hello, hello everyone, I am in Florence. There are a lot of tourists, like a massive floor. And they're eating, they're taking pictures, they're having fun. But not everybody knows that Florence is one of the most air polluted cities in the whole Italy. So that's why I think it's very remarkable that the exhibition dedicated to sustainability as a concept is located right here in Florence. So follow me, let's check it out. The whole exhibition was dedicated to upcycling, creative reuse and transforming by-products into new materials or products. So there were decors made from plastic straws, smart cotton fibers, leather from leather scarves, a yarn made from post-consumer plastic and so on. These materials can enhance the difference in recycling, water-saving and emission-reducing. Fashion can safeguard our ecosystem. Just imagine the world where energy comes from the sources that perfectly match to the specific landscape or weather type. For example, you live next to the seaside, you get the wave power or tidal energy or energy from the ocean currents. During the sunny days we rely on solar panels, but while stormy days we generate power from wind turbines, sustainable energy mix. To find the perfect energy source for communities that live next to rivers, I went to Lyon. Just two years ago, two French companies presented a project just in the middle of Lyon. They installed a farm of heater turbines in the middle of the Rhone River. The electricity produced by hydrokinetic turbines is genuinely 100% renewable energy. The principle is simple. The energy produced by river currents is converted into electricity by turbines. The environmental impact is low on flora and fauna. It has neither visual nor audible pollution. They generate enough capacity for 400 houses. That's the first form of this type and that perfectly match for city with, with a very deep river and a high flow. I'm so curious to continue this journey, showing and inspiring you to continue your contribution into the environment. Remember, you're not alone. There are so many people who are caring about our nature, about our home. Please mention in comments what interesting environmental solution I need to observe and talk about next. And together we can create the world we want for us and our children. I will do my best, however, I'm a bit limited because of epidemics, but this too will pass away. Follow me on Instagram and see you very soon. Пока-пока!